When you donate blood, you are truly giving someone the gift of life. But did you ever stop and think about what happens to that blood from the time it leaves your arm to the time of patient transfusion? Well, your blood goes on quite a journey in the first 24 hours after you leave the blood center, and we're taking you along for the ride. The blood that I am drawing today is going to be tested tonight and tomorrow, be shipped out to hospitals tomorrow night, and most likely used the next day in surgery. It's that quick. The turnover is that rapid. How does it happen? Well, as soon as the donation process is over, those test tube samples of your blood the phlebotomist drew are sent to a nucleic acid testing facility to be screened for a battery of diseases including HIV 1 and 2, West Nile virus, syphilis, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, T. cruzi or Chagas, as well as the human T-cell lymphotropic virus 1 and 2. Looking at those types of diseases, usually viral, caused by a virus, that can be transmitted through blood transfusion. The blood is also tested for cholesterol levels and to determine blood group and Rh type. In other words, this is where your blood will be labeled as A, B, AB, or O, and whether it's positive or negative. This is crucial because a donor must be compatible with the patient in need. While all of that testing is taking place, your unit of blood is going through its own process. It's taken to the biologics manufacturing lab where it's placed into a centrifuge like this one. This spinning motion forces the blood to separate into three different components, red blood cells, platelets, and plasma. So it's real tricky to spin it just at the right speed to push the heavy red blood cells and white blood cells to the bottom of the bag, but leave these small platelet cells suspended like snowflakes in the plasma. Once the blood is separated, the bag is placed into a squeezing device known as an expressor. And the end of the process, the red blood cells remaining in one bag, the plasma going to another bag and the platelet cells ending up in a third bag and thus we can basically take care of three different patients with that one blood donation. The components are then stored in their own area depending on needs. For instance, platelets must be kept at room temperature and must be used within five days. Plasma can be stored for up to a year. Red blood cells are housed in refrigerators and can be stored for 42 days, but as you can see, they usually don't last that long. In most cases, blood that's drawn today is sent to a hospital tomorrow, cross-matched tomorrow, and used in surgery the next day. When a hospital needs a blood product, it's packed up and immediately shipped over to that medical facility. This process takes place 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The need for blood never stops, and neither do we. There is no substitute for blood, it cannot be manufactured, and it must come from volunteer donors.